Hey, how's it going, everyone? I am Dustin Bass, and over there is Alan Gorgeous Slips Joaquim. What's up, dude? He noticed. <laughs> How could I not? Got my chapstick here, right here. So, yeah, it's, uh, I don't, you know, I think I'm just not drinking enough water. So, I'm, uh, lips, lips got really, really chapped uh, last night, this morning. So, Hey, what can I say? I mean, they are hurting. I haven't, uh, they haven't hurt this bad since my college days, but you know, that's another story. Yeah, that's, that's a time when you're probably not drinking any water, but you're drinking a lot of liquids. I am trying. I'm trying. So, yeah. Uh, um, no, I don't have COVID or anything, but, uh, so why are you, uh, why are you getting dehydrated? Are you in a place where dehydration is common? Um, kind of a long story. Uh, I am, but, uh, That'll be something that uh, I'll introduce later on, not not at this moment. So okay, I, I I hate you right now, and and I just want you to know that, ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't yet, do us a favor and subscribe wherever you're listening. Uh, you can click on YouTube and subscribe, hit the bell, so you'll always get an update of when we're putting stuff up. Also, wherever you're listening on the podcast, whether it's Apple, Stitcher, Spotify, Google, whatever, if you can do us a favor, and if you're able to subscribe and then also leave us a rating and a review that would be very helpful also tell your friends family loved ones um shoot go to uh, the local cemetery and tell your long last loved ones how much you're enjoying the sons of history podcast well today we are doing something a little bit different um we are recording in the morning thank you very much alan um and top of the morning to you i'm having a good cup of coffee i am drinking water and you know why i'm drinking water (laughs) i think i know (laughs) yeah exactly (laughs) exactly ben stiller (laughs) Uh, hey listen you know i i my with the area where I'm right now, uh, I found one place where the coffee was really good. So um, I, I am going to go back later today and go get some. But uh, yeah, the coffee around here is really not that good. What's funny, I, I, I say Ben Stiller. Uh, you've seen Alone Came Polly, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, my, fa- my favorite scene was when he went to, to that Indian restaurant. Yes. Oh, man, I love that scene. <laughs> and he just go to the restaurant and the guy's like... Yeah, I'm not coming out of here for a while. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, dude, I've been in that same hey, he goes, exact yeah. situation. Well, he goes, yeah, I'm going to be here all day. <laughs> <laughs> it's, you know, dude, that's a I, great I, I'll line. T- I'll tell you, I was, when I was in London, um, there's a 1987, I was in London and uh, I was with my brother and some of his friends and we went to this Indian restaurant and my God, I don't know what the hell kind of spices they put in there, but uh, yeah, I mean, this one of the guys, he was sweating. I mean, he was sweat, and the guy was from Africa, and he was sweating. <laughs> so if he's sweating, then you know, <laughs> you know how bad that was. God, I couldn't, I couldn't taste my, uh, I couldn't taste anything for days. Yeah, that's that's too much, man. That is way too much. Uh, but what's funny is a clip. You know, you know how like they do these suggested clips on on YouTube, which is actually the topic we're going to be talking about. Um, they did the the clip where they're playing basketball, and the guy like takes his takes his shirt off. Oh yeah, you remember those days, skins versus shirts. Oh man, so good, so good. Um, what's funny is I hadn't thought about it in a while, at least when we've been recording on the show. But so I'm having coffee because we're doing doing this in the morning because uh circumstances within our control um i'm having coffee and i tell you hey i gotta go turn off the coffee maker you remember that first season which was as long as the second continental congress you remember that first season where we would record at your house and before we'd get started you'd be like hey man you want to you want some coffee or make some coffee and i'll be like yeah let's have some coffee uh, i know you're getting that i know exactly what inevitably you're inevitably the beep. every episode <laughs> that coffee maker would turn off beep 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 and i would just look at you like every time every single time we got to do this guest no guest it doesn't matter and you'd be like 
Who knows, man? Well, that's because I was I was focused on the show, so you know. Oh yeah, so focused. And you know, you, you know, I, I'm not an actor. We all know that. And so we'd have we, I mean, that was a season where we were dressing up and uh, portraying John Adams. No, and no, Tom no, Jefferson. no, no. This was the podcast. No, I would not have like. No, that was dude. When we were doing that, like that was hours on end. So I'm sure we had coffee, and maybe that did take place but um i'm talking about when we were doing like the podcast um early on at, at your place it was so funny well ladies and gentlemen baseball season is here it's why i'm repping the astros uh we had a couple of i guess you would say no shows for this weekend so alan and i we had as we made mention from uh, episode one we still had a ton of stuff to talk about from episode one uh so we are here to talk about more of that obviously we haven't um (laughs) there's there's a super long list um but we're gonna take out this one section and sort of i'm glad i'm I'm glad that um i'm glad that we're doing this because i'd much prefer having this conversation um because there's just there's a lot of stuff going on right now and uh you know this this conversation needs to be needs to be done uh, uh, for that reason, uh, just, you know, just the last, the, what, a couple of days ago, we heard about, um, or actually, no, it was just yesterday, but for re- when this comes out, it'll be Monday, uh, about uh, uh, Donald Trump being uh, indicted. And then, I, and then you know, we're going to talk about uh, censorship. I have a, a good friend of mine who lives and dies by social media with her pol- up with her politics and she was cut off so i think that this is going to be the perfect time to have this uh, topic yeah i think so too and we'll get right into it uh i mean the question is are more or less are we committing national suicide like are, are we killing ourselves via politics like everything has become political every single thing in our life has become political. Yeah, sport, sports, TV shows, movies. Sports, TV shows, movies, you school, know, every, even, everything. Even schools, you know. Uh, you know, I, I used to get along great with a with a with everybody in in some of my organizations in high school and now, you know, half half of them don't talk to the other half simply because of the politics. Yeah, and the the primary issue I see as well is the the working relationship between corporations and the government. And when we talk about monopolies, when we talk about monopolies, you can only have, really, a monopoly if the government assists you. If they assist you, like they've done in, in so many ways, especially turn of the 20th century, um, you have a monopoly. When they give you benefits, when um, they sort of open up the doors for your business in comparison to helping other businesses, when they give you those types of benefits, we see it happen all the time. And those, I mean, shoot, I was just last night. Take, for instance, Moderna, right? Moderna was one of the vaccine producers. Now, it's very interesting that Dr. Fauci was like, oh, Moderna is going to be a big player in vaccines. And Moderna, up to that point, had never even done vaccines before, which is very odd. So, obviously, you're having investors put their money in that, who also invested in that Uh, company more or less was the government because the government was paying for these vaccine companies to come up with vaccines. Like they are investing taxpayer dollars into those companies. Now, good, um, bad, otherwise, however you want to view that, like you can say, well, Dustin, there was an absolute necessity. So we had to get these things created. So if you have these drug companies already sort of on the front lines of putting these things together, 
then yeah, it makes sense for the government to say, okay, you guys create it because you're already there. We're not going to try some new company or, or whatever. We're not going to try just the, the private space to come up with something and however long that'll take. I get the argument. But now you have Moderna's stock that is falling. And here just this week, federal government saying they're willing to give Moderna two and a half billion dollars to ensure that they either don't go under or their stocks don't go like th- that their stocks don't plummet. That is a way to create a monopoly. That's just one of those examples. That's one of the like really recent examples. So and this this goes with our conversation that we had uh, two weeks ago where the federal government is doing things that that they've never that, you know they they were never authorized to do. It, it's not enumerated in the Constitution. Um, and yeah, and it, it's, you know, in, in my understanding, and I, I don't, I'm not stating this as fact. I have heard that uh, Dr. Fauci, I'm just going to call him Fauci. I'm not going to even, he doesn't deserve the title doctor. Fauci has, uh, he's either invested in Moderna or he's on the board of Moderna. I don't know. How, do you know? Off the top of my head, I, I I couldn't tell you. I do know this. Or he had a patent. He has some sort of a patent, maybe with Moderna. It's it's very interconnected. I know at least as of like six to eight months ago, I think the FDA board, a majority of the people on the FDA board, had direct ties to Pfizer. How do you get a monopoly going, except? by the conflict of interest where you have direct ties financially. I mean, you're, you're not directly tied because, you know, you take Pfizer medicine. That's not a direct tie. You are directly tied to Pfizer. And therefore, if they have something come up and be like, hey, we need to get this passed or we need to get this accepted or approved, there's the conflict of interest. There's the incentive to approve a medicine, a drug, a vaccine produced by a company that the board is t- highly connected with. Like that is a a massive conflict of interest that deals with the public health of the nation. And yet we just do this like little wink and a nod or the federal government gives this wink and a nod. Literally the federal government because it's a federal agency which we talked about in week 1. Now, I'm, I know I'm addressing a, a little bit like the, the medical community, but I know for this topic, we wanted to talk about the suppression of free speech, um, everything that's going on, which is a tie-in to the federal government working hand-in-hand with corporations, private corporations, specifically big tech organizations. We've seen this, and I wrote an article about this, I want to say two years ago for the Epic Times talking about how private companies, big tech private companies, it's not the federal government that's playing Big Brother because 1984, we always think Big Brother is the government. Well, it's the private industry that is playing the role of Big Brother and they're getting incentivized or directed by the federal government as well. So it's sort of a a hand in glove type of situation. You know, this reminds me a bit on um, when Dwight Eisenhower uh, left the presidency in 1961. Um, He gave a warning. Uh, I'm sure many, many of our listeners are familiar with it, uh, about the uh, military industrial complex. And, you know, the federal government doesn't build the tanks or the uh, the jet aircraft or the guns. Um, They contract with with different organizations. So we have had, you know, prior, prior to, I want to say actually prior to World War I, we really didn't have too much foreign intervention. Yeah, we had, uh, we, we went to war with Mexico. We also went to war with Spain. But, you know, prior to World War I and Wilsonian, demo, so-called Wilsonian democracy, we really didn't get ourselves too much involved in, in foreign entanglements. At least we didn't try to. 
Since World War II, I, I can't even count how many wars that we've actually been in. And I'm not, I'm not talking about just Korea and Vietnam or, or the Gulf War, but, you know, little, little, little engagements. Um, and the, you know, one of the things that Eisenhower was warning about is, is that if we just keep getting into wars, keep getting into wars, you know, our, our, the, the, the men and women who work in our federal government are working hand in hand with many of these uh, companies, contractors. They'll provide us the weapons. The government will provide us the wars, and that is one of the things. You know, in, in you know, in my younger days, um, I, I was in my in, before college. In my younger days, I was a solid Republican. You know, Republicans because of Ronald Reagan. You know, Republicans can't do anything wrong. That you know, then you get into some real life and. Um, and you start noticing things. Uh, a lot of things that I noticed around 9-11, uh, post 9-11, even before 9-11, there was just some things that just didn't make sense to me. And I, and I couldn't understand, you know, uh, I, okay, Saddam Hussein. I know, okay, Saddam Hussein's a bad guy, but why are we so hung up on getting rid of him? Why are we going to war against Saddam Hussein? What the hell did he do that was so bad? Um, again, yeah, he was a bad guy, but who in the Middle East wasn't? So Iran, Iran was a bigger pain in the ass to the U.S. than Iraq ever was. So, you know, th this whole concept of, of the federal government working with these companies where we're feeding off of each other. This is, uh, th this is not something that, that I know that our, you know, our, our founding fathers never intended for this. Um, even Washington, when he left office... He warned us, don't get involved in foreign entanglements. Don't get involved in foreign alliances. And, and he recognized that just by the, um, the alliance that we had with France. When, we, when, when they helped us during the Revolutionary War, uh, the one who really helped us was, uh, was uh, King Louis XVI. And he got overthrown. And then you had, a, you had kind of a Republican and an empire that, that grew out of, that, out of the French nation. And Washington didn't want to be involved in France's entanglements with Britain or with, with all the other European powers. So they warned us about a lot of what is now taking place, which is what our government is doing right now. Which, to that point, uh, Washington wisely utilized that situation to alleviate our debt to France. Uh, it was like, hey, man, this is a... This is a totally new government. We don't. We owe the government. Uh, we owe the monarchy. We don't owe you guys <laughs> anything. Yeah, that that led that led to a war with. Uh, it, they called it the quasi war. Yeah, the quasi war with France. But um, I mean, I thought that was great. Uh, what would you say that statecraft? Right. Ballsy. Very. You know, it's interesting because you mention. Um, the the federal government the government saying okay we'll we'll provide the wars these uh, private contractors military contractors weapons contractors saying we'll provide the weapons um, and it's the media that will say we will provide the propaganda I remember as a kid this was in the nineties so I was probably early teens when this came out my parents had the Time magazine subscription and I remember. I, vividly, I remember the cover of Time magazine. I remember two specifically. You may remember there was one with Saddam Hussein's face, and it was um, like a scope on his face, right? So it was a scope target on his face. But there was another one, and it had three people. It had Saddam Hussein, Adolf Hitler, and Joseph Stalin, right? And that is massive propaganda, right? So automatically visually is inserted the thought is inserted in your head like this guy is one of the worst dictators war criminals however you want to view it that's ever lived when you're putting those three side by side and so the media plays a huge role in going to war um pushing vaccines um, elections, um, mandates. Yeah, there's there's a crisis every every few years. There's a cri there's a crisis. 
And it's all about inducing crises because if you have a crisis, then somebody is going to benefit. It's like people say, well, Winston Churchill said this or the guy who was uh, one of the main guys in the Obama administration who I think was like the Chicago mayor for a little while. He said like a lot of people have said this or a variation of it, but it's never let a crisis go to waste. Literally. Because with the crisis, you mentioned 9-11, that was definitely not wasted. That changed the entire world, that moment. That changed the way that we, we saw the world. It's, it's the, we got into several war, wars because of, of 9-11, um, or we, we put the blame on 9-11. Uh, we changed the way that we traveled globally. Um, TSA, you know, they are everywhere now as, as terrible a, of a job that they do. And I know people are like, wait a minute, they do a good job. Like, you know, you think about it. Is TSA actually necessary? <clears throat> no, they're not. Like how many, how many terrorist attacks prior to 9-11 on planes were taking place compared to post 9-11, right? I mean, if, if we were to like branch that out, we're only like 20 years, a little more than 20 years after. And then you've got all of the flight industry prior to that, all of the commercial industry prior to that. Um, like if you make the comparison, here's the thing. If you were to get rid of that security blanket that people feel, oh, I feel safer but you're really, you're really not. You're not any safer than you were prior. You get rid of TSA, people would flip out. People, not everybody, there would be a lot of people would be like, oh, thank God, we don't have to deal with this anymore. But there would be a lot of people who would feel very unsafe because the propaganda has already seeped in, the indoctrination of you need TSA to keep you safe is already seeped in. It's if we get rid of TSA, oh, the airplanes, it's going to be wild west. I mean, people with they're going to have knives, gun, axes, you know, who knows what they'll have. It's a security blanket that people want, sort of like the mask, right? Like it's already like we know that the mask isn't helping you. Not not to the extent that you've been told or, or an untold and then retold and untold and retold again. It's a security blanket. You know, I want, I'm going to say this about, um, you know, prior to 9-11, we, there were a lot of hijackings. After that, there really haven't been any. But I don't attribute that to the TSA. What I attribute that to is, first of all, the, the, the cockpit doors are reinforced, number one. Number two... If there's a hijacking, a pilot's not going to let them take over. Not after what happened at 9-11. The pilots know, you know what? Okay, you want to kill five, six people back there? You want to kill a bunch of people? Fine, but you're not taking over the plane. And the pilots now have, I don't know if pilots now can carry guns, but they've got that reinforced door. So hijackings is not going to be something that, that's going to be an effective tool nowadays. You know, they're, they're, they'll, they'll use different methods, uh, bombs. Uh, but you don't need the TSA to check if there's bombs and luggage. In fact, um, you know, I can say that TSA hasn't been very good at at locating weaponry. You know, they, there have been numerous tests, and whether they're baggage handlers, whether it's the screeners, they haven't done a very good job. So, you know, that remove the TSA, get rid of the power that it has. And you're not going to see hijackings. You might see something else. But yeah, you, I mean, you're absolutely right. Um, it is that security blanket, but it's a very costly security blanket. It's not a very effective security blanket. Yeah, exactly. You have, you're creating a demand. You're creating an industry, more or less. And that's what the government does. The government will create an industry. And even if that industry is not profitable, not doing a good job, you will still pour money into it. Hey, we could look at the USPS, you know, the Postal Service. We could look at the, the public education system. Um, 
You can look at, you know, a number of the federal agencies. Um, you can look at all of these things and, and even like the national forestry system. It's like, you know, these are not profitable organizations and maybe some of them are necessary. Some of them are not, or they could be scaled down dramatically because they're just not doing what they're supposed to be doing. Now, I know we wanted to talk about um, the media and I wanted to tie in. It's like the media playing a role in. Let me mention this part. You, you talked about crises. Um, you know, I, I can I remember back to I, I can go far as back as 1970, things that I can remember. And the things that I remember dating back in those days is um, we had we had the energy crisis. We were told we had only a few years left of, of fuel. So so the, with the media and the government worked hand in hand to force us to, uh, you know, like Jimmy Carter came on TV one time and and he wanted us to wear sweaters, you know. If it's 30 degrees outside, don't set your heater up to to 80 or, or 75 or anything like that. Put it down. I don't remember what the number was, but he said, but, but sit at home and wear a sweater. And he did that because we only had 10 years left of, uh, of gasoline or 10 years left of oil. Um, there was the global, we were going to have global cooling. Uh, we we're going to have a new ice age. They kept warning us in the 70s. You know, scientists were saying, Leonard Nimoy, he even came on and talked about how we were going. You can look it up. There's a video. Uh, I think you can find it on YouTube where Leonard Nimoy uh, came on stating that, you know, we are going to face another ice age. Um, then the 80s came around. And, you know, in the 80s, we had the Brazilian rainforest. Ten years, we're going to run out of rainforest. Well, you know, that was back in the 80s. Uh, there's still Brazilian rainforests. Uh, we, had acid, we had acid rain. We had, um, it wasn't, a, you know, we had unilateral nuclear disarmament. We have to unilaterally disarm our nuclear weapons, whether the Soviets do it or not. Uh, we had, uh, and it wasn't until I think later on, I don't remember exactly when the whole global warming thing came out. I know that was in the 90s. But we had... Uh, we had HIV. We had AIDS. Everybody's going to get catch AIDS. Everybody's going to catch <laughs> AIDS. That's what we kept hearing. AIDS is no longer in the gay community. It's everywhere. It's in the hetero community. It's exploding in the hetero community. Well, you know, I mean, yeah, I, you know, I had, listen, I had friends who died of AIDS, um, but they were all homosexual. Now, does that mean that we let them die? Absolutely not. I mean, these were people that I really cared about. Um, and ironically, how many years, it's been how many years now when we still haven't even found a cure for it. There's yeah. drug companies, uh, have created cocktails for you to continue to take and you have to continue taking their drugs. You know, I mean, Magic Johnson, he caught AIDS back or he caught HIV back in 91. Um, but yeah, they haven't come up with a cure. They haven't come up with a cure for cancer. They've, uh, they've come up with drugs Keep taking drugs. Keep taking drugs so that you uh, you can sustain your life. But uh, yeah, AIDS was AIDS was the big thing. We were all going to catch AIDS, um, you know. And then you know, then we had global warming. Then we had uh, turned into climate change. There's always there's always something always something you that directs the- corp that that directs public policy, and the media is there to hype it. Yeah, you had turn of the twentieth century or twenty first century. You had Y two K. You had, and then you had nine eleven, and then you had Iraq, Afghanistan. Um, you had the financial crisis, uh, climate change. Uh, you know, and you know, with the crisis, you have you know, uh, what is it that the Wall Street movement, um, and then. Well, what's his name? Al Gore, Al Gore, and um, and uh, what's it? John Kerry in two thousand nine said that within five years, um, the uh, Arctic would be ice-free during the summertime. They said that within five years. And that was back in 2009. And, and the thing is, is they are, they are, I don't even know if they're believers in what they're talking about. No, they they're multimillionaires. Probably- Al, Al Gore now, Al Gore had, what, $100 million in his, in his name? 
Yeah, it's something like that. It's like a hundred million. Like I, I would think you and I were talking about that. It's like I, I don't know if uh, like last time I had heard it that it was like two hundred million dollars. Like this guy is such a con man, and he is constantly cashing in. Why? Because the propaganda, the the media loves it. Like I was in journalism. I sort of still am because I write for the Epic Times. But the first thing that you learn. Um, is if it bleeds, it leads. So if it's sensational, that's getting on the front page. That's getting the main story on TV or radio. Like that is the main thing. It's like if it bleeds, it leads. So we need to just keep bleeding in order to keep the eyes on whatever it is that we are um, like. If it bleeds, it leads. And if it's sensational, people are going to watch it. And if people are going to watch it or read it, that means that you're going to have a lot of viewers or a lot of readers. Therefore, you're going to have a lot of people um, buying advertisement. Like, that's the whole thing. It's very cyclical. Like, we will create the crisis in order to have money, in order to make money. Like, that's that's just the way it is. Um, no, matter, no matter what it is, no matter how false it is, no matter how detrimental it is. You know, just like the whole climate change. I am really surprised that people are still buying in to this whole climate change thing. Despite the fact that I think every single prediction that Al Gore made on his, um, what is it, Inconvenient Truth, none of those things have taken place. And that was, when did that movie come out? Like 20 years ago? That, yeah, that came out uh, right around the time, uh, right around 9-11. It was around that time. So like early, early 2000s. But uh, you know, right now, you know, another crisis that they're that they're discussing, and and it's causing issues between Americans is the whole systemic racism, and then you have um, trans genocide. Now, the the whole you know the trans genocide thing that that the it's a it's a manufactured crisis that they're saying that we're trying to. You know that 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 there are some segments of society, like the Christians, are trying to kill uh, trans people or or the drag queens. You know, the drag queens was never an issue. I have a good friend who's a drag queen who lives in Miami Beach. You know, more power to him, but he performs in front of adults. Nobody cared if you're a stripper, and I'm talking about a a hetero, heterosexual female stripper. Nobody cared. It's when you do it in front of children, but but the media and the, the politicians have worked together to manufacture a crisis stating that they're going after drag queens, they're going after the trans people. No, you can be trans, you can dress up and call yourself, you know, Matilda or whatever the hell if you're a dude. Just don't push it on kids, and if you're a teacher, don't preach it to your students. Leave your... Leave your sexual orientation, leave your your belief system, even if it's political, even if it's religious. If you're a if you're a Christian, you don't push it on your kids. Uh, look, listen, I understand. Okay, you don't want to, uh, you know. I'm a Christian myself, but if if I have a class, I'm not going to sit and push that on my students. I may bring it up or something. I don't know. I, I'm I'm getting off on the. On a, um, off the subject here, but but what I'm what I'm getting at is is that they're creating these crises that don't exist. Everything is manufactured. There is no systemic racism in this country. They, there was back in the early days, but but today the laws actually benefit people of color. They go out of their way to help people of color. So, well, you bring up a very valid point because we live in, in an age of victimhood where we all want to be victims for some specific reason, you know, no matter what it is. You've got the systemic racism when you're like, are you, you've got to be kidding me. Like, and people always, people always follow up with this, with the racism talk. It's like, Yes, there is still racism, and I agree with that, but that's only because there are still people, and people just, as long as there's people, there's going to be problems, you know? Like like Biggie said, 
Mo money, mo problems, like mo people, mo problems. And maybe that's why that there's the uh, depopulation movement, whatever. Um, but my point is you you can say um, I mean look at look at the Italians and the Irish. Look at the Catholics and the Protestants. Well, I'm saying like they always say there's racism and we've got a long way to go. I'm like, what are you talking about? We've got a long way to go. Yeah. It's always that. The left and the right love that phrase because it's an easy cop out. It's an easy way to say, um, well, I'm against or I'm for certain things, but we've still got a long way to go. I'm like, no, in 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 domestic racial relationships, no, we do not have a long way to go. We have come a long way and really to an extent, we don't have very much further to go. I would say we don't have any further to go. As The, the downside with that is that we have created unconstitutional laws. Um, one of them would be like the affirmative action. It's like that is unconstitutional where you are benefiting people based on their race or gender. Yeah, regardless of their financial... Uh, right, regardless of the financial, regardless of... You know, the the educational legacy, maybe their parents and grandparents and all that, like went to college and stuff. No, it's based strictly on race, gender, all those things. And that comes down to we want to be victims in some way, shape or form. This comes down to white people. It comes down to Christians. It comes down to any type of group. Whenever you have the ongoing narrative has been systemic racism, right? Whenever something happens um, to white people, white people will, will immediately be like, oh, well, you see, you see, we also, and it's like, don't gravitate to that. Don't gravitate, don't utilize a moment of evil or wickedness in order to purport and or be a proponent of your victimhood, which doesn't really exist. You know, there are victims in this country. There are there are problems in this country. The problem with those problems is we make them way bigger than they need to be. And therefore, we we just perpetuate the problem. Well, you know, I'll, t- I'll tell you this. Things are not going to get any better as long as, um, you know, I've seen on Facebook. Uh, Facebook, uh, Mark Zuckerberg has been pushing some of these discussions. Um and they're trying to confirm, yes, we do have climate change. Yes, we do have systemic racism, and we need to do something about it. And I have no doubt that you know Mark Zuckerberg is working with politicians, who's working with the federal government, who's working with different groups. All these groups are being created. You know, we are creating a national suicide where you know we're, we're hurting people in the name of of social justice. This whole DEI thing, DEI, how much money was it? Um, $83, $83 billion went to BLM. 83, I think that's what the number was. I don't know. Maybe you can correct me on that one. Eighty-three. I know $83 billion went to, um, what is it, the Al-Qaeda? Not Al-Qaeda, the Taliban. I know that. Yeah. Yeah, I know, yeah, I know that. that. That's another That's another discussion right there. There's another crisis. Uh, was it John, Joe Rogan even made a comment that you know we've got the stuttering senile idiot as a president and no one no one will call him out. That's the thing. Is we and you were making mention of this with the transgender movement or the transgenocide claim or the systemic racism claim. Co- like common sense will tell you, no, this is not the case. This is not the case, but the the pushback or the or the or the push that is ongoing through the media and purported through social media where people are just like yes this is like you are believing in a false narrative that benefits you either via race gender sexual orientation or politics and i side typically it comes down to politics you think of some of the most idiotic things that people say 
from just the average citizen to politicians in Congress or, or in the White House. I mean, how many stupid things are, are uttered by White House press secretaries? It's daily. And people accept it. People on one side, which is sort of half the population, accept it. Not because it's true, not because it makes sense, not because it's almost a valid point, but because it is politically beneficial, which goes into the Mark Zuckerbergs of the world working with, you know, the federal government and the FBI. And you're like, why? Not because this is constitutionally beneficial, not because it helps the citizens, not because it in, enshrines truth or helps people understand what's going on. No, this is politically motivated. It's a partnership. And it's politically beneficial. Yeah, it's a partnership. The federal government is, you know, the federal government is tied down with the First Amendment. The First Amendment states that the federal government can't do certain things in terms of free speech. And, you know, they know that. Okay, well, we have a workaround. Uh, we've got these social platforms, and we are working with them. Facebook, um, Prior to Elon Musk, he had Twitter, and and the the whole Twitter files is confirms all this. So you have Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, um, that that's just to na- YouTube. That's just to name a few. Now, they all of them are working together, I, and I believe Facebook and Instagram is owned by Meta. So you're blocked by one group. You block. You've blocked by Facebook. You're going to be blocked by Instagram. So they basically control the narrative they they control the method of free speech now parlor parlor opened up as kind of a competition for facebook although it was more of i think it was more of like a competition for twitter well what did was it amazon amazon shut down parlor they shut it down oh yeah you can still you can still open it on your app but but you, you can't get anywhere with it and so um, you know, Amazon was one of the companies that had this huge monopoly. And, and believe me, uh, Jeff Bezos benefited quite a bit because of the, um, um, the, you know, the COVID and all the restrictions that took place. You know, the government was shutting down businesses, small businesses, whether, whether they were uh, businesses like in California. Hell, you know, even, even in Houston, we had, uh, we had uh, Lena Hidalgo was making sure that certain businesses were not opened. Um, uh, bars, for instance. Uh, she actually, Lena Hidalgo is the county commissioner. She's the county judge of Harris County, which is where Houston is located. And she was using methods that were very similar to the Soviets or the Nazis. If you see a bar open, here's a number, call us, report them. And we'll shut them down. So people with legitimate businesses who are trying to make a living are being shut down with the help of the federal, with the help of any government, whether it's local, state, or federal. Um, You know, Michigan, uh, California, New York had some very harsh protocols in place to make sure that we all complied. Um, So... You, you know, you have methods of doing it. You know, Parler is a great example of where Amazon, which which benefited greatly and wanted to keep, um, you know, the stay home, save, save lives thing. Um, they shut down Parler. So you have you have all these companies. Now, you know, I have a friend of mine uh, named Angela Box. Now, she um, she's she's on the right. And yeah, some people will say, you know, she might she might be too extreme. Some people might say it's about time somebody says the, th- the things that she says. But free speech is protected. What one person might call extreme, another person might call, you know, proper. And so it's, it's not for the federal government and it's not for any one of us to sit and say, well, you know, your, your speech is too extreme, so we can't have that. We don't have a place for that type of... of uh, of speech now, I, and I'm not labeling Angela as, as an extremist by any means. That's what, what I'm, that's not what I'm getting at. What I am getting at is that free speech is protected. Uh, we're, we don't have free speech because of the Constitution or the Bill of Rights. It's just that the Constitution and the Bill of Rights protects that inalienable right. 
to free speech. So when that is taken away from us, when when every method of 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 free speech is taken away from us, you can't you can't post anything on a newspaper. You can't post anything online. They cut every method you have to to speak out. Then you don't need the first amendment. You don't need the protection of the first amendment at that point because there are other ways to get around it. The, the First Amendment is no longer protecting us because there are, there are ways to get around it. It's the same with uh, even with the Second Amendment. You know, the government can't sit there and take, they really cannot take your guns away. But if they buy up all the bullets, and which is what was happening under the Obama administration, they were buying up all the bullets, 40 caliber, 9 millimeter. Well, then, if, if the public can't purchase bullets, Problem solved as far as they're concerned. So, you know, these are the methods. And so when you have companies working, if the federal government has a partnership with, with these companies, Amazon, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, to shut down your free speech, to them, problem solved. Yeah, and to the people who, and, and because the ones who are getting shut down are conservative voices. Uh, this is this is something that the left will say. Well, those are private companies. Those, you know, they are allowed to shut down whoever they want to. And that is not the truth. That is not correct because there is something called Section 230. Section 230 is... Is was made at the end of the 90s, right before the turn of the 21st century. That was written into law. And um, I can't remember the name of the law, but it, it's just Google Section 230 and, it, and the, the law itself uh, comes up. I forgot the name of it, but it's rel- not super long, but it's relatively long. But what it's saying is that these social media companies, more or less, like the internet and everything, is in line with how we've always communicated either like on the phone, like, so AT&T could not, Oh, we don't like what you're saying. So we're going to shut you down for saying what it was like. No, AT&T is not responsible. They're not held responsible for any type of conversation that is going on between people. And it was supposed, it is supposed to be the same way on the social media uh, um, platforms. They're not held accountable. They're not held liable for whatever type of comments or conversations that are taking place on these platforms. That is no longer the case. It, and and what, these, what these companies are doing and then also what the, the national government, the FBI, whatever, are doing are actually breaking the law. They're going against Section 230. And... With with that, I mean, so you are breaking the law in order to shut down voices, and then you constantly hear people in Congress, um, people in the executive branch, like the White House press secretary, will constantly, you know, we look to Twitter and Facebook and YouTube to do more to shut out misinformation, disinformation. It's like, no, that's that's not their job. In fact, they're they're breaking the law doing that. The Hunter Biden story, the uh, the laptop. Yeah. That that is an example right there and and the FBI what is it uh, the, what you had 51 intelligence so-called intelligence people stated this looks like uh Russian disinformation. It has all the the markings of Russian disinformation. All the earmarks. All the earmarks. Um they they would not allow a- anything that the New York Post had or anything that any of us, if we tried to, if we tried to share it, nope, they they banned it. They they completely banned it. You you were not allowed to talk about Hunter's laptop. You simply were not allowed. Uh, you had the FBI meeting with Mark Zuckerberg, stating, you know, uh, and, and you know they're sitting, they're sitting and they're reading uh, Rudy Giuliani's emails, so they know they know that Rudy has. Um, um, a copy of uh, what was inside Hunter Biden's laptop. So they knew something was going to come out. So the FBI goes and talks to Mark Zuckerberg and says, there's going to be some stuff coming out. It's Russian disinformation, so don't post it. So you, ha- you had that. And, and the Twitter files, 
The Twitter files do agree with that. Um, the Twitter files also show about about uh, shutting down Donald Trump. He was president of the United States, and they shut him down. If if you you know January the sixth, if you look on the January sixth, where he's not telling people to get violent, he's actually trying to calm people down, saying don't attack the police. Well, that was I think the last Twitter, um, uh, the, the last tweet uh, from from Donald Trump. So they Facebook shuts down Donald Trump, Twitter shuts him down. I don't know if he had an Instagram, but they shut him down. Uh, and then later on, like I said, I mentioned about the parlor where they shut down parlor. You had fact checkers. Bullshit. I'm, I'm just going to, that's what they are. There, there's, there's no kind word to say. These fact checkers are a bunch of con artists. They're a bunch of uh, partisan bullshit artists. Um, go fund me. The thing is, go, is... Hold on, I want to mention this. I want to mention this. The GoFundMe and PayPal. You say something. If, you're, if your cause is, is to help somebody that goes against their narrative, GoFundMe won't give you that money. And, and examples are going to be like what happened in Canada. And then, and then uh, who was it? There, there was uh, the, the guy in Wisconsin, um, the one who, who shot those three people that were attacking him. When the whole mob was attacking that one guy in Wisconsin and he had to defend himself, they shut down his GoFundMe account. PayPal, PayPal will, I believe it's twenty five hundred bucks. I don't, I don't know what the number is, but they, PayPal stated yeah, that if you do something that we don't like, you're not going to get the money that's owed to you. That's why I shut down my PayPal account. Yeah, I mean, you have to get out of that. Like there was the the like that was leaked the twenty five hundred dollar. Uh, uh, penalty whatever it's like are you ab are you insane like that but they're like oh no we, we walked that back and i know people will say oh that wasn't like enough with calling everything a conspiracy theory it's like russell brand you know he said this joke the uh, the other day like what's the difference between the truth and a conspiracy theory about six months six yeah and it's like yeah th- precisely so quit calling things a conspiracy theory because all you do is just try to push off, push off, push off. When you know what is going on is happening, you know it's the truth. And going back to what I was saying about like the the section two thirty, like you're not you're not liable, right? Well, BuzzFeed released something um, five six years ago called the Trump dossier. It was the whole you know, Russian, you know, this guy, it's a hit piece that was purchased by the Hillary Clinton found, you know, uh, campaign. It was a hit piece that they were, they, they wanted something on Trump. Well, this guy, uh, Christopher Steele puts together the Trump dossier, um, and all the intelligence agencies go through it and they're like, no, this isn't, this is not legitimate. Even Obama was like, no, this is, he told Trump and like, this isn't legitimate. Buzzfeed still decided to release that in its entirety on its website. And CNN, uh, Washington Post, New York Times, everybody came out and said this was completely irresponsible of Buzzfeed to do. But regardless, it was, you know, it was Buzzfeed's prerogative to do that. And it was their prerogative to post it on Twitter and Facebook or wherever they wanted to. And none of that got shut down. None of that got, you know, said nothing. Nothing happened. And that's the thing is you got to let people decide what is going on. Because when you end up suppressing so much information and specifically one side, you start getting people really riled up. You get people believing things that are not true because they aren't privy or they're not even getting to see anything that is true because those things are getting shut down. So you have, like take for instance, the origins of COVID-19. Now we've, we've got this, well, the lab leak theory is actually a good theory. In fact, it, it might be true. Joshua Phillip, friend of ours, guy over at the Epic Times, broke this story in 2020. Towards the end of 2020, he didn't say this is the, this is where 
the leak or this is where the COVID-19 virus came from. He didn't say that. He pointed towards all of the things that surrounded that Wuhan lab. And is like, this is a substantial theory that it could have leaked from the Wuhan lab. Well, what did YouTube do? What did Facebook do? They shut all of that down. And like, this isn't true. Fact checkers piled in. And people, because it agreed with their political alignment, agreed with those fact checkers. Like, oh, this has already been fact checked. By who? Snopes? Does anybody even believe anything that Snopes puts out? Are they still around? They are. I, I don't even know how that is. Uh, yeah, like even I, possible. I it's like it wasn't like this guy and an, like a prostitute that were working together and like put it together. Anyways, enough with that. Prostitute. My, yeah. <laughs> what? My point. I thought it was a husband and wife that ended up getting divorced or something. Right, because he was sleeping around with some prostitute that ended up working something along those lines. Yeah, it probably made a probably made a lot of money because of Snopes. I mean, you know. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And the thing is, is you have it to where. Every, all of these groups are working together to silence one particular po- side of the political aisle. And it's like, this is not a long-term solution. This is a long-term disaster because you are purposely, private industry, you are purposely working hand in glove with the government. And that is going to come back and shoot you in the foot, if not hang you, because this is going to affect everybody. This will strip rights and freedoms away from everybody because you are under the impression or you are, it's, you know, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. You are doing this and you are freely relinquishing people's rights to speak out and to know the truth, or just to know information, figure stuff out on their own, and to and to make a living. I mean, Fauci Fauci helped direct the you know you need to stay home. Uh, it was a two weeks to flatten the curve, and then it and then it lasted longer. And you know, Fauci was behind all this. Fauci was suppressed the origins of COVID. Fauci was the one who uh, he he was the one that was directing the national policy on on the response to COVID. Um, you know, and, and, you know, his wife, his wife was the one who was supposed to police the NIH. His, yeah. his wife was the, his wife is the, was the, was the person there who's supposed to police the NIH to make sure that they do the right things. So, you know, Fauci made quite a lot of money. Right now, things are coming out. You know, the, the whole, the safety of the vaccines, um, you know, hy- hydroxychloroquine, you know, it's it's that's been on the market for quite some time. I mean, quinine was known as a method of preventing malaria during World War II, and um, you know, hydroxychloroquine. I'm like, what is that? I guess you would call it a derivative of of quinine. I don't know if that's the right if I'm using the right terminology here, but but um, hydroxychloroquine and um, was it that one that that horse? When, they, when Joe Rogan took it, they said it's a horse wormer or dewormer or whatever it was. And, you know, Joe Rogan, you know, I, I've had COVID twice. And for me, I, I, I'm not vaccinated. Of course, the CDC, which is uh, an arm of the government, directed all these companies to state, your employees have to be vaccinated. Now, my company, the company I work for, Wanted to know, am I vaccinated or not? So I had three choices. Either I tell them yes, I tell them no, or I can refuse to answer. And if I refuse to answer, then they're going to look at that as no, I am not vaccinated. But I've never had, I've never had a company ever ask me my vaccine status, whether it's for the flu or, or anything else. So Fauci was behind so much of this. And the fact that all these other methods of protecting yourself was being looked at as as a, like a horse dewormer. Now, I, me personally, I took a lot of vitamin C, D3, zinc, uh, elderberry, and I had extremely mild symptoms. I did not 
Again, I was not vaccinated, but I had extremely mild symptoms for about a day or two, and that's it. But, it, you know, when, when Joe Rogan, of all people, and Joe Rogan's no conservative, but when he came on and he said, look, this is what I took, and you had CNN, you had um, all, the, all these reporters MSNBC, who, who, are pushing, yeah. who are pushing the narrative, stating, oh, that's a, that's a horse dewormer. You know, again, this this is this is what we're trying to get at. Where you have you have the federal government, you have you have these uh, companies, these pharmaceutical companies, you have the media, all working hand in hand to um, push public policy, which not only affects our daily lives but affected so many businesses. I mean, how many businesses have gone under because of uh, of these public policies? Well, you think about it. Like we we mentioned uh, the recession slightly um how many businesses went out of business uh because that how many banks closed because of that um and then you have this during this time you had the greatest transfer of wealth in human history and you mentioned amazon amazon made so much money these those types of companies that would oh we'll come to your door uh no contact you can order whatever you want we won't contact you and it's just like one, that's not good for people. People need to be in contact with each other. There was a time early on. Uh, if people if people are not noticing the process of being lied to, then you're not blind. You're willfully blind. You had, like, going back and forth, stay inside, right? Stay inside. Don't even go outside. And then when people are like, um, but what about like going outside and like getting vitamin D, won't that help? And they're like, well, okay, you can go outside, you can walk your dog, but only by yourself. Like this type of stuff that was going on, like we're only, this is only going to be for two weeks. I remember when that that came out, it's only going to be for two weeks. I told my neighbor, I was getting my, out of my car and uh, my neighbor was, was walking. I go, Hey, welcome to Cuba. Welcome to communist Cuba. And she was like, oh, it's, it's, it's not that bad. It's, it's just for two weeks. And I go, you really think it's going to be two weeks? And she's like, yeah. I go, I can guarantee you it's not for two weeks. I said, you don't shut down the entire world and say, oh, it's only going to be for two weeks. This is a massive undertaking. And you can look at it however you want to in a conspiracy theory manner. I don't care about that. It just made zero sense to say, just an arbitrary number of two weeks. We're only going to do this for two weeks. And anybody who fell for that, I don't know how you fall for it. You're going to go from two weeks. Okay. Just, uh, two more weeks. Okay. Two more. Like how many times would we run into two more weeks? And then it just got to like, uh, you know what? F it. We're not going to say two more weeks. We're not going to say a month. We're going to say flatten the curve. We got to flatten the curve. And so, all right, well, We've flattened the curve. Actually, the curve is now going down. And like, well, no, not until we get nobody. No one will have COVID. We will have zero COVID. Until we hit zero COVID, we got to keep these lockdowns going. You're like, are you kidding me? And then, well, once we get the vaccine, then things will go back to normal. (laughs) Like, okay, vaccine comes out. Like, all right, the vaccine, it's safe. It's effective. You know, and like, okay, everybody get in line, go get the vaccine. They get the vaccine, like, all right, you're not going to get COVID. And then people all of a sudden started getting COVID. And like, okay, well, you won't be able, if you get COVID, it, you know, you won't be able to, it won't. It won't be, it won't be that bad. They're saying that it won't affect you that much. It won't kill you. Yeah. And then it got to that point was like, okay, you need to get one dose. Okay. You've only gotten one dose. Well, there's another dose coming out and you need to get a second dose. Oh, you got three doses. You actually need to get the booster too. Oh, you, like three boosters? Okay, great. It's like, okay, so now it's, you're not going to get COVID. Okay, you're going to get COVID and you'll probably trans, you know, transmit it as well, which we didn't think it was going to take place. Um, but you're not going to get sick. You won't be hospitalized. And then people are getting hospitalized and like, okay, well, you won't die. And then people were dying, not just from, covid but from the vaccines themselves and getting sick oh wait wait no you're, you're getting sick because of the people who are not vaccinated so the unvaccinated it's on them 
They are the they are the reason why you're sick. They are the reason why you're dying. It became the pandemic of the unvaccinated. You know, but you're like going, but wait a minute, but I'm vaccinated. How can I be catching it if if someone else is unvaccinated and I'm vaccinated, I shouldn't catch it, right? Well, no, you still, you know, and and I remember I remember when I first caught uh COVID, I had to wait 3 months before I was eligible to get the vaccine, but the, my doctor was saying, yeah, you should go get the vaccine. And I'm like, well, well why? I, I've already had it. Well, you should still get it anyway. But why? I mean, since when have you ever gotten a vaccine after you've already had the disease? Well, well you, sh- you should still, this is what my doctor was saying, you should still get it anyway. Well, but this doesn't make sense. You know, I mean, yes, I know inoculations have worked with other types of vaccines, but, but you know, and I've had the shingles vaccine. Um, I don't get the... I don't get the flu vi- uh, vaccine anymore, but uh, I got the shingles vaccine. I get a tetanus shot, but you know, like the the shingles vaccine has the dead virus in it. Um, you know, George Washington inoculated. That, well, that was his policy. I don't know how many he got done, but I know that he inoculated his soldiers, like let's say at Valley Forge, um, because uh, you know smallpox was a, was a threat that could have wiped out the entire continental army well again those are using dead or dying viruses this virus was a little bit different this is called the mrna virus and it was it, it was very different from from previous uh, uh from previous vaccines so and, and you know and and another thing that i want to bring up is is the gain of function i don't understand why the whole gain of function isn't a bigger story. You know, Dr. Rand Paul has come, has discovered, I don't, you know, he's in the government. He knows how to find all that stuff. But but he's come up with documents showing there is there was gain of function. That, that we did, Fauci, when, when it became illegal, Fauci sent everything to China. And we funded Ch- China's gain of function research on the COVID vaccine. I mean, I'm sorry, on the COVID virus. If that, if we can 100% confirm that this virus came out of a lab that we helped fund, I personally can't say that anyone is going to do anything to Fauci. Fauci's still not going to get in trouble. The only way is, it, it, you know, the media is going to defend him. Well, okay, so what? You know, they were they were trying to do it for our benefit. You know. Uh, they 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 know that eventually something like this is going to hit us. So you know we need to give him a break. Pfizer, Pfizer has been tweaking with the COVID virus. They uh, Project Veritas. They um, they interviewed undercover interviewed this guy that is in the know, and he was stating, "Yeah, we are tweaking the virus. We know that the virus is going to um, um, what, what's that what, what's that mutate." So if we can mutate it and we've got the uh, the vaccine for it, then then you know in his opinion, either it's because we're going to make more money or because we'll, we're, we'll we will already be there and we'll have a vaccine for that mutated virus. Well, they're they're playing God, and no one is calling them on it. Rather than rather than go, you know the. There's one political party that's just defending them. And rather than go after the people that are mutating the virus or going after the people who are um, doing the gain-of-function research, the Democrat Party is actually going after the people who are exposing the story. And I, the, the whole Matt Taibbi thing is a perfect example where it's not what Matt Taibbi and Elon Musk have exposed in terms of what the federal government is doing wrong and illegal. It's the fact that, are you really a journalist? Where did you get this information from? I, you know, I, if we find, if we find the smoking gun that states, yes, Fauci did authorize gain of function illegally and sent it to China. I don't, I, I can't say for certain anything is going to happen because you're going to have people in the federal government who are just going to defend them. And most of them have the letter D behind their name. Some are, but most of them have the letter D. I 100% agree with that. That the, the, They will circle the wagons. 
and they will protect their own interests. Whether that interest is simply saving face for the political party. It is, and it can be as plain as the nose on your face. It could be a memo where Dr. Fauci says, I approve of your gain of function research. I mean, it could be something as plain as that. And be like, the people, not just, in, not just in Congress, not just the politicians, but people along party lines will either defend or just ignore. That is, that is the situation that we are in. Because, and I, I was putting this down, like this whole situation that we've run into over the past few years with the COVID stuff, it runs like this. The federal and state government demand certain things, and, and, and they are, they're hand-in-hand hand with corporations, right? Pharma. So <clears throat> take, for instance, your doctor, and this sort of made me think about this. Like, your doctor cannot tell you why you, who are relatively young, healthy, have, have already had the virus, cannot tell you why you should get the vaccine except for the fact that you should just get it. You need to get it. There's no reason to get it. You just need to get it. Federal government is hand in glove. Obviously, this is during the Trump administration. He brings in all these corporations. We're like, all right, we're going to do these particular things. And one of them is we're going to create a vaccine. Pharmaceutical companies create the vaccine. Well, those vaccines have to be utilized. And in order to do that, doctors have to administrate them. So the AMA, the American Medical Association, comes in and makes sure, demands that these doctors, or you will lose your license, you are going to be administering these medicines, these vaccines. The doctors, therefore, to their patients say, you got to take the vaccine. It's going to save you. It's going to blah, blah, blah. I don't really care what I have to say because I don't want to lose my license. I don't want to lose my practice. So therefore, I'm going to lie to my patients. So the patients are like, oh, yep. Well, my doctor said I need to take it. It's That's the authority that I'm going to believe in. Therefore, I'm going to propagate what I am being told. So then you have patients or people in general, along with media, all echoing the same exact thing. And then they take it to social media, media companies and individuals push through social media and it pushes out to everybody else. And like, well, all these people can't be wrong. The pharmaceutical companies, I mean, like take, and then you go back up the ladder. Like, well, why would my doctor lie? Well, they've got something to lose. Why would the AMA lie? Well, they've also got something to lose or at least something to gain. Why would the pharmaceutical companies lie? Well, because they've got a lot to gain. Why would the federal and state government lie? Well, they're hand in glove with these pharmaceutical companies. Like they are putting all this investment into these private companies. They've got a lot to lose too. Understand the circle, the vicious cycle that is taking place in this country. It is almost in every aspect. And, and if we, if this pandemic has not opened up your eyes to what's going on, I don't think that your eyes will ever be open. And like I said, I don't think it's blindness. I think it is willful blindness. This goes against my party politics. So I can't step into your realm. And we, we mentioned a number of times. Think of the people that are pushing back, like big names that are pushing back on all this stuff that's going on. Bill Maher, not a conservative. Elon Musk, not a conservative. Matt Taibbi, not a conservative. Barry Weiss, not a conservative. Russell Brand. Joe Rogan. <clears throat> Joe Rogan. Russell Brand. Like, all these guys. Bill Burr. Like, all of these people are not conservatives, and yet they're moving into the conservative camp. Nobody that I know, big name, that I've heard, that is on the right in the conservative, is moving into the left. Nobody. Everybody is moving to the right because they're like, this is absolutely insane. Like, oh, you're anti-transgender. No, we're not. What we're saying is leave the freaking kids alone. Quit having these, 
drag queen story hours in the libraries and shame on the parents that take them to those to those things. You're a freaking you're an effed up individual if you're taking your kid to go see this. I'm sorry. And there are a lot of effed up individuals in this country and that's part of the problem. But going back to what I was saying with the whole systemic racism, it's not here in this country. Sorry. It's not. Is there racism? Sure. Is there hatred? Sure. Is there sexism? Is there violence? Yes. Why? Because there are people on earth. All right. So that's just the course of human nature. You're always, we can't get better as individuals if we have nothing to fight against. If we have nothing to push back against and say, that's wrong and that's right. What becomes very detrimental to society is when you create problems. Yeah, it's human nature. I mean, you know, yeah, you know, you look at what happened in in Ireland, Northern Ireland, whites, Christians, but it was because one tribe was Catholic and the other tribe was Protestant. You're gonna, you know, in New York, Italians and the Irish and the Puerto Ricans. They did not get along, but you know they're all white. So it's it's human nature, and you can't you can't legislate that. You have to, you know, you have to. If you have children, you have to teach your kids right and wrong, and you have to teach your kids who cares what color a person is or what religion a person is. It doesn't mean you have to embrace their religion or you you have to embrace you know, uh, their sexual orientation. It just means follow your own path, but don't discriminate and don't hate the other person simply because their religion or their orientation or their nationality or their color is is wrong. You know, I, I made a point one time, you know, my car is black. All right, what's the difference between my black car and a white car and a red car and a green car and a gray car? Nothing. They just look different. But... I love the way my car performs. So, so there you go. <laughs> you, know, you you have a you have a black dog. Is your dog any more or less behaved than you know you know any other a spotted dog or any other colored dog? No. Well, it's all about training. I train my dog. I got some dogs over here. Like I was saying, you know, I think they've all been shot and killed yeah, by but, now. There you I haven't go. Seen them for a while. It like it's like the culture. Yeah, cultures. I I can sit there I can sit here and say that one culture is going to be going to be better than another, okay? I, and I don't care if people are going to say that's a supremacist attitude. Sorry, but there are some cultures that are better than others and Yes. You know, when you have it's when, obvious. when you have a culture that murders one tribe over another like what happened in Rwanda, uh and it's happening in other nations um throughout Africa, the Congo. It happens in the Middle East if you're a Shiite and a Sunni you know they've been at war with each other, you know, since what the uh, the eight hundreds, the seven hundreds, nine hundreds, whenever it was. So it's human nature, and and you know that all that does is that that shows how human nature is. It's not to legislate certain things. That that's just not going to work. Well, to your point, and to to finish up. This whole idea of like you like you were talking about, you know, the kids and everything. Telling kids, like we're like the Bible says, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Like that's the role of parents. Parents are supposed to train their child in the way that they should think. And I'm not talking about indoctrinating or whatever, but at the same time, it's like that's the parent's prerogative is to indoctrinate them according to their their values and beliefs. Like my parents are Christian, so I was indoctrinated according to the Bible. As as I grew older, I studied on my own to see that which was true and that what what wasn't true, right? And there are things that I grew up even in my Christian circles that I was like, okay, I don't agree with how we're interpreting that and that and that. So it comes down to are we training children to understand right and wrong. The problem that we're having right now is we have 
a lot of parents who are like, well, I think the child should just make decisions on their own. It's like, look, you're not going to let your kid figure out how to cross the street on their own. You're not that stupid. And the only reason you're not allowing your kids to figure out how to cross the street on their own if you're a terrible parent is because media has not been telling you, oh, you need to let your child figure out how to cross the street on their own. That's the only way that they're going to develop. I can guarantee you people would start doing that if the media started chirping that one. So you're say- so saying that a child should figure out their own gender and that there are multiple genders, that I, and this is my final thought, that idea tells the child that there is no such thing as truth. There is no such thing as the obvious absolute truth of a male or a female. You're a boy because A, B, and C. You're a girl because A, B, and C. And that's it. And you institute massive confusion into that child's life to where they grow up with the understanding that there is no truth and everything that I think I perceive to be true it's a it's a toss up. You know what I like to tell them is if if you really believe in that, go get a rose, go get a rooster and uh, see if that rooster thinks it's a hen, and see how many eggs you can produce, or go milk a bull. <laughs> yeah. Go go milk a bull. Let's see how far that goes. I would prefer uh, those types of people go milk a bull. So, but yeah, if you're gonna go into business and you want uh, to sell eggs. Yeah, go go find a transgender uh, rooster. See how well that goes. Or is it a transgender hen? I don't, I don't know. I don't even know anymore. But people people who believe in evolution, whatever. This is not evolution. This is devolution. Like we are devolving. Like we are going backwards. We are going into and in, we're going into like insanity. Like this is this is this is not progress. This is digression, I, and it's plain as the nose on your face. Hopefully, people will will come out of it. I mean, obviously, we're seeing more and more people coming out of it. Um, but ultimately, it comes down to you know who's in power, who's making the laws. Um, don't get so caught up in your your political party that. You don't. You ignore all of the insanity that they're purporting. Yeah, if you're uh, if you are born with a penis, don't try to milk your uh, children, don't, your babies. Don't uh, press them up against your breast and see if they're gonna. Because <laughs> that, that ain't gonna work. <laughs> and uh, and and you know it's what is it the fe- it's a female mosquito that sucks the blood out of people. So. I'm just going to leave it at that. <laughs> no, thanks, man. Appreciate it. And the media continues to promote those insane ideas. Like, quit publishing it. Well, people are writing it. Like, well, don't publish it. Let them publish on their blog. Anyways. All right, dude. Yeah, remember, two plus two can equal five. 1984. That's where we are. That's where we are. Fiction has become reality. All right, dude. Um, that's all I got. You got anything else? No, my, they're vacuuming next door, so I can't hear them. So I think we're I think we're in the clear. And nobody, we better clear it now because nobody has been mowing the lawn. Yeah, this morning, I was, so was going to say, aren't they going to mow the lawn? In a, well, that, they don't do that till about four o'clock anyway. So usually about three three or four o'clock is when they start mowing in your in your location. No, that's only. Uh, the other day. So usually oh, we're past they, the time. They've been doing it quite often. No, you don't know. You don't live here. All right. I'll see you later, man. I hear you complaining about it all the time. I wish you the very best. Thanks. Whatever it is that you're doing, you're such an idiot for not, not saying what you're doing right now. But uh, whatever. I digress. Okay, I'll good. I'll chat okay. with you later. All right. So catch you next time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hey, how do you, you like, uh, what do you think? Does this look bad?